Hello, I'm Tara Grabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to vlog, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, vlog 250. It's your PhD and what your supervisor means when they say it's your PhD. Now when we reach these special milestone vlogs, We try and do something a little bit meta. We try and enact some content that enables you to reflect on the nature of the doctoral process. And today we're doing that. It's quite a tough vlog, this one. It's a bit nasty. It's a bit gritty because it is confronting you with some truths that may or may not be accurate for you. So what we're doing today is exploring the phrase it's your PhD and what it means when your supervisor uses that phrase because when we enroll in a PhD we really get a playbook a PhD playbook about the things we can expect and what these phrases mean so today I'm going to open up that playbook and explore what that phrase means for you and look it's used in lots of different ways it's your PhD it's your PhD it's your PhD so as you can see, this very short phrase <laughs> has a lot of different meanings. And that's why today I'm wearing my phoenix. Most of you know I'm a bit obsessed by the phoenix. And so it is about today confronting the horror. Maybe today you're at a bit of a low moment in your doctorate. And so like the phoenix, have a think about the phrases and the ideas that I'm going to explore in vlog 250 and see if it helps you rise and rise once more. So this vlog is about establishing an effective communication system between your supervisor, your advisor and yourself. It is your PhD and you have to have a reflexive capacity to understand what that phrase means. It is code and it is a velvet glove around an iron fist. And so today we're going to take off that velvet glove and see what actually we're talking about. This phrase is really about blame and about responsibility. It's also about research integrity and academic integrity. It's a proxy. It's a proxy that allows those of us that try to help people when a relationship breaks down, it's a proxy that allows us to try and understand what is occurring in a supervisory relationship. And there are at least 10 reasons why a supervisor says, it's your PhD, it's your PhD. So we're trying to understand today what your supervisor is meaning here. But really it's about a lot more than that. It's about you understanding the nature of your own doctorate and finding yourself within it and finding your future within it. Let's do this. It's your PhD. One, your supervisor is worried that they're contributing too much to your thesis. Now, this is the big one. This is the big one. And yes, this has happened to me as a supervisor. So the first reason your supervisor uses this phrase, and this emerges often in the final year or in the final six months, is a matter involving research integrity. So this is a really serious one. What happens is the supervisor advisor is reading your draft or drafts and they're recognizing too much of themselves in it. The research integrity matter is a really serious one. Now research integrity has lots of different definitions and it's a really interesting policy and procedural field. But at its most basic, research integrity refers to the person who is named on the thesis or on the publication as the researcher and author actually is the researcher and the author. Now we need to always remember with all the stuff that goes on about publications in the PhD, we need to remember one truth. That degree has one person's name on it. So when you enact a PhD and you receive that degree certificate, it's got one person's name on it, and that person's name is yours. Now, we have policies and procedures in place 
to manage co-authorship, co-authorship of publications, and what happens when co-authored publications are used in a thesis. But can I say, even with those policies and procedures, examiners do express disquiet and sometimes horror. Because we see many examiners, remember I read thousands of examiner reports, we do see examiners who question the authorship of the thesis. Let me tell you why. Because the calibre of the writing and the research in the publication is of a much higher order than the research and the writing in the rest of the thesis. There is a gap. So they're arguing that the student that has supposedly created the thesis, the publications are written at a higher level, therefore, is it the student's work? That's a research integrity matter. But supervisors who conduct multiple drafts of theses can express concern that they're working too hard on that prose, right? And what happens is, team, and this is as a supervisor speaking, is if I worked very hard with a student, I start to see myself in the prose. And it's a horrifying moment, can I say, because we've worked and we've worked and we've worked and we've tried to help the student lift and we've had to shoulder a lot of a burden there. And so at that point, when a supervisor starts to rec recognise themselves in the thesis and it's a research integrity issue, they will use the phrase, wow, it's your thesis. It's your thesis. So what I would advise to you is really as a favour to me, stop simply embedding the tracked changes into your PhD script. So often, and I know you do this, students get the draft back and they just accept all. They accept all the track changes and don't do that because your supervisor is presenting those track changes so you learn the errors in your prose and in your research. And if you're not looking at each individual correction and seeing what your supervisor's done, then you're not learning. So it's becoming your supervisor's work. And don't be surprised that if a supervisor goes through this process and says the phrase, it's your PhD, they'll pull back at that point and they will reduce markedly the level of drafting and editing they're doing. Okay, two, your supervisor does not think that you are working hard enough. Ooh, okay. Now the first expression is your PhD was about your supervisor. So they're worried about research integrity. They're worried that they've embedded too much of themselves in your thesis. The second most frequent term is completely about you. Your supervisor doesn't think you're working hard enough. So what's happening is the supervisor is angry, flabbergasted, exhausted. And they're angry that you appear to be sort of cruising through the thesis. The pressure that you're putting on your supervisor to try and help you pass is really high. Now, they can't say to you and they won't say to you, wow, you are lazy. Gee, you're lazy. They won't say that. They won't say, you know what, you are just not working hard enough. Or they won't say, wow, you have pretty well killed me as a supervisor. They won't say those phrases because they care for you. They care for you. So they won't tell you the difficult truth. Instead, they will say, it is your PhD. It is your PhD. Therefore, don't be offended by the phrase. And if this is you, have a look in the mirror. And this is hard. This is hard to do this. If you are cruising through the PhD, if you're not working hard enough, look in the mirror. And when your supervisor says, it's your PhD, recognise it's code for time to lift, mate. Lift, lift. Three, speaking of lifting, you haven't improved. You haven't improved through the PhD. There is an old cliche that we used to use 20 years ago, that your supervisor is the expert in your thesis for the first half, <laughs> and you are the expert in the second half. So at about 18 months in the Australian, British and New Zealand system, there's a movement. So the supervisor loses the expertise, they're no longer the expert, and for the second half of the thesis, you become the expert in your field. Now, we're increasingly seeing the student is not 
gaining the level of mastery or control over the material through the thesis. So their expertise is not improving throughout. So if your supervisor is teaching you content right the way through the thesis, then you know something is wrong. They have worries that you're not reaching the level or the standard of independent research that we require in a doctorate. Because what a PhD requires is an arc of improvement. So if your supervisor believes they're not seeing that arc of improvement through the candidature, it's not in place, then they start to worry and worry along. Because what they're worried about is that they're leading you, that actually they're running the project. And it's at that point where they're not seeing the improvement, they'll use the line, just a reminder, it, it is your PhD. Four, there are writing, stylistic and construction problems in the doctorate. So the last few reasons that we've talked about in the vlog so far are about why your supervisor uses the phrase with regard to content. So they're worried about your mastery over disciplinary expertise, right? But reason four is about writing and it is about style. So this means the supervisor is saying to you, right, there are problems with your language selection, there are problems with your vocabulary level, sentence construction, paragraphing, configuration of an argument in a chapter. So what's happening is the supervisor is expressing fear, fear that you will not pass the thesis, that the examiner is simply going to find too many corrections to allow the thesis to pass cleanly, even through major corrections. So your supervisor is worried that it's going to go through as a revise and resubmit and has to go through re-examination again. And yes, we do see that a lot. If a student presents an undercooked thesis with lots and lots and lots and lots of stylistic errors, the examiners will give it a four, they'll give it a D. So your supervisor is worried that they're not seeing an improvement in form how you express your ideas rather than the content. So always remember that writing matters. Writing matters a great deal. I get infuriated when I hear supervisors say, oh, look, as long as the data's in place, you're fine. Wrong. Wrong. Examiners are looking for your communication system, that you can convey your information, your research cleanly. Attention to what you write is important, but also attention to how you write it is crucial. And if your supervisor is increasingly worried about your writing, you may hear the phrase, you know what, it's your PhD. And it emerges because your supervisor is frightened frightened that you don't know how to write, you're not improving in your writing, and that they are going to have to, and can I say you're hearing the horror in my voice, that because you're unable to reach the standards of writing, that they're going to have to go through every word, every phrase, every sentence, and draft it for you. Thousands of hours of work. So they're expressing fear. Five. Why are we using the phrase, it's your PhD? Five, it is a critical point in the research and you don't recognise it. <laughs> this is a particular problem that we see in two extreme fields. We see it in the empirical sciences, the lab-based sciences, but we also see it in the high humanities, so the theoretical humanities. So what's happening here is a supervisor is expressing frustration that the student is not taking the thesis standards and progress seriously. So the supervisor is making the point that they're not responsible for your PhD. They already have one. So you sometimes often hear supervisors say, I've only done it a couple of times, but dude, 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 it's your PhD. I've already got one. I've already got a PhD. This is your PhD, right? So in other words, what's happening, the supervisor is stating to you, you are displacing your responsibilities at a key moment of your research. So what happens is, and I love it when this occurs, the supervisors are trying to help you, by the way, in the empirical sciences, this is a moment 
where you have a chance to really do something extraordinary, right? So you've done the research, the science is sound, it's methodical, it's rigorous, but if you just go through one more iteration of drafting, sharpen your, your samples just a little bit more, you can do something amazing, amazing. And yet the student chooses to be mediocre and sort of just okay. Right? We see it in the theoretical humanities theses as well, where this is a big moment. Wow, okay, so you've read the key ideas and you're about to offer an extraordinary interpretation. And the student is just not prepared to do that next push to get through and do the tough reading to present the tough, amazing analysis. So instead, you, you cop out. You cop out. You're prepared to be sort of good enough. That's fine. You're not prepared to take that final step so that the thesis can be significant and indeed extraordinary. So do ask yourself, three months to go, six months to go, can you do that final lift? Can you do it? Come on. Can you bring it? Come on. You got great data. You got a great theoretical perspective. But can you do that final lift, that final leap, and make the thesis powerful? So if your supervisor can see what the thesis can be, and you're just not prepared to do that final jump, your supervisor will say, well, it's your PhD, your choice, your life, what a shame. And that indignation is being used to try and push you to take that final leap. Six. It's your PhD. The supervisor is questioning your motivation and commitment level. Now, this is a tough one because it's not actually about the research. It's about you. This is about your motivation, commitment and drive. Do you really want this? Do you really want this? Now, supervisors often describe this problem to me as dragging a student to completion. And that's the verb used. We're dragging this student to completion. So what's happened is the student's done just about all of the research. So they're about three quarters done, right? They're close, they're really close. And yet the student sort of disengages at that point and the supervisor is dragging the student over the finish line to completion. So this clearly is an emotional issue for students, I get this. It might be fear, it might be imposter syndrome, it might be a fear of finishing. All those variables exist. But this is a real problem for your supervisors because in that state, and I've had a few of these students, how do you get them over the line? And it involves indeed pulling you over the line. And your supervisor ends up not exhausted, but exasperated. And by the way, these are often the cases where the supervisor and the student, we get the student finished, but the supervisor and the student basically break up at the, at the point that they've completed. So they've got the student through. The, stu the student really hates them <laughs> at that point for getting them through. So the relationship breaks up at the end, and that's a tragedy, but the student has got through. So that's when, at this point, a supervisor will use the phrase, well, this is your PhD, so filled with emotion, filled with anger, because look, you're nearly done. Can you just finish, right? So as you can see, this is not an intellectual issue at all. You can do it. This is an emotional issue. Seven, dependency. Mm -hmm. So we're getting to the crunchy end of the vlog here, and uh, this is the hard one. This is the big one. A supervisor has led you through the PhD and you've done what the supervisor has told you to do. You've done what the supervisor has told you to do. And at a certain point, it may be during the second year, it may be near completion, a supervisor is going to exclaim to you, wow, dude, this is your PhD, because the supervisor is worried that you are way too dependent on them, okay? You're too reliant on their knowledge, their expertise. So if a student has been led, has been led through the research for two, three years, and at no point have they assumed leadership over their own lives, leadership over their own thesis, you're going to hear the supervisor say this worrying phrase. Eight. Wow. 
your supervisor is frightened that you're not doing the work. Mm -hmm. Now, as you can see, this vlog has involved a lot of negativity, right? This is a bit of a negative vlog, this one. And it's expressing what supervisors won't express to you because they care for you. And we're not dealing with positive emotions here. The toughest emotions that supervisors have to deal with, to be frank, is fear. Supervisors have a lot of fear. They're simply frightened that you are not going to finish. So the most difficult moments of supervision involve the supervisor worried that you're just not reaching the, the, standard, the standard required of a PhD. It doesn't have the scope and it doesn't have the scale. And that phrase is used to shock you. It's used to frighten you, to try and share the feelings that the supervisor is going through. So they're arguing, you know, it's your PhD. They're trying to express to you that you seem to have forgotten what you, you're doing. You've lost your priorities and you're self-sabotaging yourself. So they're watching your PhD lose momentum and plummet to the ground. And if they're seeing that at the crucial point where they're thinking, wow, this student is self-sabotaging, it's your PhD to try and shock you out of it. Nine, it's your PhD. Controlling a student's unrealistic expectations. Yep. So some students arrive into a PhD program expecting the supervisor to be the equivalent of an undergraduate teacher. Students expect immediate feedback and they expect the supervisor to not only be a supervisor or advisor but a friend, a mother, a father, a brother, a sister. And you've simply put too much pressure on a human, too much pressure on a supervisor. So come to the thesis knowing, really knowing, that it is your thesis. Don't expect the supervisor to be everything in your thesis and in your world. So this means control your expectations and establish a portfolio or a suite of support around you. So not just supervisors, but librarians, an office of graduate research, look at the facilities, the training we provide, look to your wonderful crew, our statisticians, for example, information literacy, academic literacy support services. Get the skills. Don't place all your eggs in the supervisory basket. Remember, what you've got here, what you're expressing is a fear of failure. It's performance anxiety. And I understand that, and that is real. But the problem is you want your supervisor to hold your hand tightly throughout the process. And what I'm asking you to do instead is find lots of people to hold your hand, to just calm it down a bit on your supervisor relationship. And 10, we got here. Your supervisor is attempting to block your displacement of blame. So uh, it's your PhD. They're trying to stop you having that blame narrative going on. So your supervisor is not your safety net. Let me say that again. Your supervisor is not your safety net. It is your thesis. And if you are unhappy with your thesis, that is not your supervisor's responsibility. So, work on displacement. Don't displace your fear, your lack of work, your blame onto the supervisor. They are, remember, your guide on the side. Many systems around the world refer to a supervisor as an advisor for that reason. They advise you. That's what they do, they advise. They're not sort of a, an emotional sponge there to soak up your excess. So go into the thesis knowing with pride, with pride, that it's your PhD. No blame, no shame. It is your thesis. Wow. So as always, I wish you love, light and peace. 
and can I say just quietly at the end, thank you for all the incredible support that you provided for me for years. We got to vlog 250. I think we're going to keep going and that's because of you. So let's do our... Thanks for everything. Tea out.